And Dave, well, just first initial thoughts of when you heard that the game was canceled tonight. I thought it was uh, fake news, to be honest. Um, our team's done everything right, you know. We had 100% of our team vaccinated. Um, the guys have last year played every game we could play, this year every game we could play. We were prepared to play this game. Our opponent wasn't apparently, so it's disappointing. A lot went into the finish of the season and a 10th win, and we would have won the game. There's no doubt about it, the way our guys prepared. So it's tough. Is that the most frustrating part because you guys did everything right? Yeah. It took so much last couple years. It's taken a lot. I mean, you talk about 125 young men from all walks of life and all the things that have been thrown at the world to get a unified group, to push through adversity, to overcome adversity, to deal with everything you guys are aware of, and then to not get the reward. <laughs> it's tough, you know? Um, so I'm heartbroken for these guys. Where were you in your sort of pregame process? Where were you when you <laughs> found out? Sitting there watching the last three minutes of the bowl game that was on. Auburn-Houston uh, game, one possession game, thinking about what I would be doing in this situation and expecting a one possession game. Uh, so going through kind of my mind. Is there any possibility to find another opponent or do anything? Yeah, I mean, it's just <clears throat> maybe. <laughs> I mean, I thought we were going to be playing a game 30 minutes ago, so I don't know. I don't it's, know. Is in, in, in that sense, like you guys have been away from home for a while now. Is there a limited window of yeah. time where you can make something happen before it kind of you know becomes too much to ask of it? There's a lot of logistical things. As you you know, I mean, do we even have a hotel we could sleep in after tomorrow? Um, is the baseball stadium available after that day? Um, they weren't going to leave grass on it for the rest of the year. Who's going to have the finances to get here in time? How many days will we get to prepare? Because I'm not going to just schedule a team for the game tomorrow and not have time to prepare our quarterback for blitzes he's going to have to see. That's not fair to him, you know. But is it possible? Yeah. I don't know how possible it is, but right now I'm more concerned just with our guys, you know, and trying to figure out what's next. Was this the you toughest has ever been to stand up for your guys? Toughest message to ever deliver <laughs> to your guys? Man, I don't know. There's been a lot of messages this last two years that have been hard. Um, this was one of the more disappointing messages, but there's been some hard news, you know. What was, I mean, what was the mood like? You know, there was a lot of really sad, mad, angered, confused. <laughs> felt lied to, to be honest. I think we felt like UCLA probably knew something was going on on their team, didn't tell anybody on our side. We had no clue that they were up against that. So, you know, I don't feel like it was very well handled from their university. It would have been great to have had a heads up that this could happen. So maybe two or three days ago, we could have found the plan B. Disappointing. To kind of go off of that, there was multiple different kind of reports coming out that it seemed like, as you mentioned, UCLA kind of knew something ahead of time. How, yeah. what was the first thing you heard? <laughs> I got a call from Boo, you know, uh, minutes before a, a deal on Twitter went out from Bruce Feldman. Like, so that's, we found out at the same time you guys did. That's why feel undercut a little bit there. What was the, I don't know if you've, it's obviously been so fast, but have you had a chance to get the guys either on a call? Or the team? Kind of, yeah. We just had a team meeting seconds ago. And well, what was that, uh, I guess, message to them? It wasn't really a message. It was like, hey, y'all know what I know. <laughs> Let's hurt here together for a little while. And kids came up and talked, you know, guys that are never going to play again for our school came up and talked. And guys that are coming back talked and coaches. And, Told them what the rest of the day looked like for them, and that's it. The plan now, bar any changes, is still to go back tomorrow and schedule. Right. Yeah. Okay. I mean, unless all of a sudden we get a great opportunity that we can make manage, then we'll do that. What What are you going to do tonight? I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still like, is this happening? Mm -hmm. They've given all yeah. the, the last couple of years. You've talked so much just about whether it was social justice, all these different things mm -hmm. that these guys have gone through. I mean, does it feel like? Like when does this stop? Where does it stop here for these guys? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, um, uh, I, you want them to have some good things happen. And we've had a lot. Like, I don't want this to diminish what happened here this year. Like, nine wins with seven defensive starters out for the season. Come on. Like, that was a really good season for us. But, yeah, you feel like we deserve a little bit of luck here, you know? Like, 
so yeah. It's hard to believe at this point in this process after these few years something could happen that still surprises us. <laughs> You're right. Not in a good way though. Yeah, well, done a lot of reading the last two years. Uh, <laughs> first noble noble truth out there is that life's not fair you know and, and uh, when you start thinking it is you're gonna feel really bad you know and I think that's where we're at right now this was an unfair thing that happened and like all other unfair things there's not gonna be a, a, a rationale or a storyline that makes it feel good it's not we're just gonna have to deal with it get ready for what's next was there anything that those those seniors who this would have been their final game said to you that that or said to the team that really stood out and was significant to you? Oh, I mean, it was more just, you know, thanking the guys and telling them how much they loved them and, and they appreciated them, and, you know, Mecca and talking about how much he loved his, his years here, you know, Ricky Person and, and Devin Leary came up and talked. There's just a bunch of guys that spoke from the heart, you know, and that's what makes this team fun to be around every day. They told them this, like, I didn't change this culture, we did. Like, this team, this family, this, this coaching staff just came together, you know, and so, it's hard.